the minutes, I think, for that one. Oh, okay. Or in the to, agenda. Because I, okay, I don't know why you just do it. I had it. So maybe yeah, I better maybe put maybe this back down there. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Anybody like to sign in? Oh, okay. I'd like to meet, bring this meeting to order. We'll begin with a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen. Any of you people need to sign in that would like to speak? No? Everybody call quiet? Okay. Going, going, going. Okay. All right, first order of business to, oh, let's have the roll call. Supervisor Hoffman? Yes. Councilor Edwards is excused. Councilor Greco? Here. Councilor Haggerty? Here. Councilor Abbott? Here. Superintendent Moyer is excused. Deputy Supervisor Leo Kanowski? Here. And uh, Yes, okay, very good. First order of business, public hearing on local law number one, uh, which is a law that establishes a date for the meetings of the Board of Assessment Review. I would first ask... Yeah, here we go. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. I would ask Ruth to please read the uh, publication information. The March 2nd Daily News Notice of Public Hearing Town of Granby. Notice is hereby given that the Town Board of the Town of Granby will hold a public hearing on the ninth day of March 2005 at 7 p.m. local time at the Town Hall of the Town of Granby, 820 County Room 8, Fulton, New York, to hear public comment from those favoring or opposed to local, proposed local law number 1, 2005. Said local law would establish a date for the meetings of the Board of Assessment Review to hear complaints in relation to assessments by order of Grammy Town Board, Michelle did not receive. Uh, Grammy Town Clerk dated February 9th, 2005. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, I think the next thing I will do is read the local law. There are copies of it up front. This law just changes the date for Grievance Day. That's all it does. Uh, local law establishing a date for the meetings of the Board of Assessment Review to hear complaints in relation to assessments. Be it enacted by the Town Board of the Town of Granby as follows. Purpose. The Town of Granby and the County of Oswego, New York, employs an assessor who is at the same time employed by another assessing unit. Pursuant to the authority granted by Section 512.1a of the Real Property Tax Law, the Town of Granby desires to establish a date for the meetings of the Board of Assessment Review other than that provided for in Section 512.1 of the Real Property Tax Law. Hearing complaints beginning on the second Wednesday after the fourth Tuesday of May and so many days thereafter as the Board of Assessment Review deems necessary, such board shall meet to hear complaints in relation to assessments. This law supersedes and is in the place of the date for the hearing of complaints as set forth in Section 5121 of the Real Property Tax Law. This law becomes, shall become effective upon filing in the Office of New York State S Secretary of State and in the Office of the State Board of Real Property Services. In plain language, that just means uh, because our assessor has other obligations that were prior to us, uh, the normal grievance day which is what they're talking about when they talk about the meeting of the Board of Assessment Review, uh, cannot be, we cannot have it on, on the fourth Tuesday of May. The date we have selected will be the following week on Wednesday. He's busy that week. Friday of that week is the beginning of the holiday weekend. That certainly wouldn't be fair to a lot of people. So we go into the following week, Monday's a holiday, Tuesday's planning board, Wednesday's our first available day. Um, I think before we have comments, I, if we have comments, uh, Mr. Roach is here, he's our assessor, 
and maybe he can explain what Grievance Day is and how it fits into the whole appeal process. Do you want to use the podium or just... Uh, well, maybe it'd be better. Yeah, it'd be better for a microphone. Probably. All right. I guess the reason I wanted to change the date, uh, real property tax law says that the assessor shall be present for a grievance day. And in real property tax law, shall and must mean the same thing. So I'm required by law to be there, at least during the portion of the day where property owners voice their concerns. I like to be there so that I can express why I did what I did to the board as well. And by law, I'm not to be present during deliberations. So when they make their decisions, I leave and let them do what they do. And they make their determinations, and then they bring them back to me. Um, I'm required to be there. I am the assessor in three other municipalities. Uh, like Nancy said, we had originally thought about Friday and realized that that is the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. So a lot of people would be out of town. Uh, we might even have grievance board members that had a conflict there, so we decided to opt for Wednesday of the following week in, fair, in the interest of fairness to everyone. Uh, grievance is the process that you know is available every year, whether we are doing a reassessment or not, for you to come in and voice your concerns over your assessed value. Um, typically, people think it's too high. They come in, they talk to the grievance board and present their evidence as to why. Okay, It is not the same as the informal hearing process. This year, with the reassessment, we have an extra step in the process called an informal hearing. A lot of people have called in to take advantage of that opportunity. <clears throat> Some people haven't for whatever reason. If you don't go to an informal hearing, it does not disqualify you from coming to see me in May or going to grievance, okay? And keep in mind that if you should want to go to small claims court after grievance, you have to first file a grievance, okay? So it's informal hearing. Talk to me sometime in April or May, grievance day, and then possibly SCAR or Article 7 if you choose to go that route. It's not a one-shot deal. And after we get through the informal hearing process, just like before, my door is always open. All right? I'm there every Monday morning, every Tuesday afternoon. It has been a little bit difficult with me wearing both hats during this phase of the project because I have obligations both as the contractor and as the assessor. And we have to live up to both because we don't want the state to say, okay, you missed a step, we're not going to let your project go any further because then we're right back where we started, okay? And I don't want that to happen. Now, whether your assessment went up or down or remained about the same, um, you know, I've met with the state, I've got the results back from what we did, we're going to be at 100% when this is over. And if you look at the tax rates that have been published as a result of what we did, you can see why it was a good thing. Every tax rate, be it school district, county, town, what have you, they all went down, some of them considerably. Now the hard part is convincing the powers to be to hold the line. Right? I have assurances from Mike that the county is probably most likely looking at a zero budget increase. I know the town shouldn't have a problem doing that or even going down again next year. It's time to get on the phone to your representatives at the school district. You know, Hannibal's talking about more money already. Fulton has come out and said they may ask for some more money already. If only one person or two people call and say, you, got, you can't do this to us, they're going to ignore it. If 100 or 200 people call or show up at a school board meeting and say, you got to hold the line this year no matter what it takes, then they can ignore you. Okay? Because once they start changing their budgets, then the numbers that I've created change. So those people that saw a $200, $300, $400 decrease, that number is going to get smaller. And conversely, the people that saw a $500, $600, or $1,000 increase, that number's going to grow larger. I don't want to see that happen to anybody, okay? But I can't control what those other entities do. Any problem, any time, after this process is over, come and see me. But for now, Monday is the last day to call in for informals. Take advantage of it if you have any questions at all. Even if you just want to know why I did what I did, come into a hearing and I'll sit down and I'll show you. Or Dave Gray will show you because he'll be doing some of the hearings as well. Come in and see me in May. Same process. Right? If you can't make it to a hearing, it's not the end of the world. If you know somebody that's upset because they can't make it to a hearing, let them know. It's not the end of the world. Okay? Then when I sit with the role, you'll have another opportunity to talk to me. Even if you've been to a hearing, I'll talk to you again. Okay? Even if I just say, I think I'm comfortable where I'm at, you know, file a grievance. I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to lower it, but I'm guaranteeing I will listen to what you have to say in every case. All right, that's really all I can do at this point, and we'll go from there. So 
If you want, Monday's the last day. Call in, get that appointment. We're taking appointments from 9 to noon. There's still plenty of slots left. And failing that, come in and see me anytime in April or May that I'm in the office, okay? If I have to make an appointment to go through your house, if you feel it's that important, I'll do it. All right? One thing I would add is there's a certain, I don't want to say rules of procedure, but better behavior can sometimes generate better results, okay? I don't like to have to have people leave my office, but I'm not there to suffer verbal abuse because you're upset either, and, and I won't do it, okay? I'm going to be as good to you as you are to me in every case. Treat me with respect, and you're going to get nothing but that back. And I'm saying this because I had an incident this week, okay, where I had to have somebody removed from the office. I don't like to get off to that kind of start with my property owners. I'll attempt to rectify the situation later after the gentleman's had some time to cool off. But I will work with them in the future. You know, I don't, I don't close the door because, you know, we may have had uh, a disagreement at one time or another, all right? So... Having said that, I think that, that pretty much sums it up. Did you want me to say anything else? Did you want me to touch on anything else? Uh, Does this affect the staff program too? Well, the reason a lot of the rates went down and a lot of people saw the decreases that they did is because the state has seen the results of the project. You know, the county printed the impact notices. The states have looked at it. They said, get through the process the way you should. You're going to have your 100%. So what that means is instead of receiving 82% of 30000 and 50000 we now receive 100%. So... Yeah, right there, you've got a tax decrease because you're getting more exemption of money. Veterans exemptions, more money. Business exemptions, more money. You know, ag exemptions, which is a big thing to a lot of people in this town. More money. It's, you know, there are some ag parcels that went up twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, and they're still seeing an overall decrease in the property tax on that parcel because of the prorated ag amounts. The... Um when a school board raises, in other words, they come out and they say, we're going to have to have 6.9% more, 10% mm -hmm. more, whatever it might be, that will raise your school taxes naturally. So that takes away from your star exemption. That, well, like it's not going to take away from your star exemption, but it's going to change the rate. You're going to get 30 or 50 regardless. But if you're paying 6% more, you know, that 30 takes away from what? You know, that, there's the problem. I mean... I've lowered these rates by means of this valuation project. Now, they're going to change slightly because we're going to given a little bit of money back during the hearing process and during grievance. They always lose something. Right. You know, you never keep everything that you've gained during the process. And that's perfectly normal and to be expected. I mean, my property owners know more about their houses than I do. And there's always wiggle room, in my opinion, to an extent. Okay? Um, and the wiggle room will not remove us down from 100%, right? No, no, absolutely not. And one, one thing I would add, one word of caution, don't hang your hat on last year. Don't come in my office and just say, I want to be right back where I was. Because I paid no attention to prior assessments when I did this, because a lot of them are just way out of whack. So I didn't, you know, I didn't go out and say, you were willing to pay on 50 last year, so we're going to leave you at 50 this year. Forty-some percent of assessments actually went down. Okay. Um, I, I just didn't use it as a basis for anything. We looked at the sales comps and the information that we had. We formulated all new numbers. Okay, That's not to say the previous assessors didn't hit the mark sometimes. I mean, they, they did the best they could with what they had. They just didn't understand the process front to back to get us to this point. All right? So I didn't really want this to turn into a question and answer. I don't want to take up the whole. No, no. Um, no. Anytime you have a question, come in and see me. I'll do my best for you. All right? Thanks. Thank you. All right. At this point, this is a public hearing on this local law, and I would entertain any comments that anyone has to make, but these comments should be related only to this law. Later in the uh, agenda, you will see a public comment period, and we can have other comments. Um, but at this point, the only concern is, do we have a problem with changing the date to the second Wednesday after the fourth Tuesday. I will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's had to be worded that way. It sounds kind of kind of wordy, but you can't say the first Wednesday in June because sometimes it will be May twenty thirty first or May thirtieth or whatever. So we have to be very precise and 
peg it to the existing grievance stake. And see, that won't shorten anybody's chance to have the time to grieve that they grieve. No, it would give you more time to prepare. Right. A different date, that's all. More right. time to prepare. That's actually another week to prepare right. the case. Right. 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 Is there anyone who wants to get up and make a comment on, on this local law? And of course, they publish that every year for you. Know, yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't think it would be controversial, but uh, so I guess at this point I'd have a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. All right. Ruth Calderon. Councilor Greco. Yes. Supervisor Hoffman. Yes. Councilor Haggerty. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Okay. And we will reconvene the regular meeting. And at this point, we do have a period of public comment. Uh, you may have some comments to make about the rebuild process or whatever else you may wish to speak to. However, with our rules, we have asked that each person who wishes to speak should sign in. So if there's any, is there anyone else who wanted to? Why is that? That is the rules that we, uh, we've always had rules, a procedure for our meetings and uh, this year, we for the first time, we started asking for sign-in. Is that for repercussions or, or what? No, no. This started, we changed these rules in January. Had nothing to do with uh, reval or anything like that. We've always had rules of procedure. We made some slight changes. One of them is what that we ask people to please sign in. We are trying to keep orderly meetings because we're here to do the work of the town. Okay. And, the and the people that were coming preferred to have it first rather than at the end. Yes, we used to have that it at the end. We moved it to the front. So if you would like to sign, so you may. If you'd like to sign in the gentleman in the yellow jacket, you the, can. Also, the other rules of procedure are on the table here. We have five-minute period of sp to speak, one time only. And that's about it. And you must be, of course, uh, respectful of one another. Okay. Les Holmes. Honey Hill Road, Fulton, New York. Um, I just got to say that um, the thought that having these um, uh, uh, this discussion at the beginning of the meeting isn't necessarily everyone's. It's, it's your idea. Right. It's not our idea. Our idea is an open meetings law, an open meeting type where, open we, can, meeting where we can comment no, that reasonably. Is, that is not. But I know no, you don't like any comment, and that's fine. No. You're running it at this point, and, and I, I respect you for that, and I'll, and I'll say that way. Mm -hmm. But I don't want everyone to think that it was our idea to have it at the beginning. Okay. If I had it, if I had it my way, I'd be able to comment on things that you're doing. Well, and and I don't have it my way, so I'll I'll handle that for now. It has not been that way for years. That's not exactly true. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not exactly true. The next person, Cheryl Holmes. Cheryl Holmes, 198 Honey Hill Road, Fulton. Okay, have you received the insurance payment for yes, the I work? Did, did you re reimburse? Yes. Those? Okay. Um, next one is you're signing the contracts with the union for the highway department. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you give them this year? Well, uh, they are going to contribute to health insurance. Everyone who receives health insurance How will much? contribute toward the premium, uh, $43 per month. What's the total premium? Well, it depends on whether it's a uh, single or, or two-person or family. Uh, we are is giving 40, them... Wait a minute. Is it $43 whether it's single Yes. or married or family? Mm -hmm. They wanted a set amount. We wanted a percentage, but we 
you know, we okay, settled so, on a set So if it's family, they doesn't matter whether you're single or family, they get the same amount. Okay. Right. I'm paying a higher percentage. I will be paying a higher percentage toward my premium, which is small, relatively, about a third as large as, as the family premium, mm -hmm. as, as they will. Okay. What else did you give them? We gave them raises uh, for the three years of 3.5% each year, in part because, uh, or primarily, it seems a little high, but because of this transition into them contributing yeah. to help with that transition. Okay. What and else? Uh, what else? Um, oh, we in, in, initiated a very limited retiree plan. You they gave have them to, retirement? Yes. Okay. Uh, they have to be here 25 years, and they have to be at least 55 years old. And it ends at age 65. So that's much more limited than most people provide. Okay. Next meeting, are you going to have all this wrote out so we have a copy of it? You can come in and look at the contract. Okay. Uh, can I get a office. copy of it if I want? Yeah, I, I suppose so. I guess what, did she, what did she say? Did she could get a copy of it. I guess so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have to I'll, ask Ruth. I'll come in and see Ruth tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll bring my paper. I want, I want we increase the... Uh, Work shoe allowance from one hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, and T shirts. Those t -shirts colorful t shirts and take we all we did something we always did, yeah, before we, we just changed we it. Just a put in a client they get That's that's the significant things that we did. Okay. But Cheryl, I want to say what? this to you. What? We spent we started in October. We worked well, I know from October how long you've worked on up it. until February to settle this contract. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. my opinion was is if they didn't want to take the bare necessities and go your way, let them all walk out the door. You got okay. enough people that would have plowed the roads for you. Well, That's, we could have, I know. She's that. got a right to her opinion. Next person, Ed Williamson. Ed Williamson, Bingham Road. Uh, Okay, I spent much of today uh, touring the town of Granby with uh, a gentleman from the Department of State. He drove down from Albany, mainly based on a complaint that uh, Frank Fax had sent to him early in the year after he had presented it to the zoning board here and also tried to get uh, one of the code enforcement people to, uh, to handle it. They didn't. So Frank forwarded to Albany. Frank accompanied me today on the drive around. Uh, we showed him several things in the town that we've been complaining about. Uh, you have a letter in front of you. I will read it just so the people understand. It says, we have written to you and spoke to you several at several town board meetings concerning the New York State certification of Mr. Brace Talents and Mr. Robert Dalton, Town of Granby Code Enforcement Officers. We had a meeting today, Wednesday, March 9, 2005, with representatives from Albany Office of the Department of State Code Enforcement Division. We drove them around and showed them some of our concerns with code enforcement in the Town of Granby. The Department of State Code, Inf code Officers informed me today that attorneys in some towns across the state has picked up on some of the residents' complaints and some towns have paid out rather large financial settlements because code officers are not certified by the state. The good citizens of Granby do not need to pay out any further costs. We are already taxed and surcharged enough by the state and county. This letter puts you, the town board, and the town attorney on notice to the serious concerns that lack of the state certification for all code enforcement personnel could cause the town could cause the town of Granby. Um, 
I don't really believe you understand the seriousness. Not so much that they can't keep on operating the way they are, but if anybody comes back and has a formal complaint of the way they were treated or what happened or how they were made to do things and it's not according to the way the state wants it, this town could be sued also. And that means you could be sued personally, each member of the town board, the town attorney, according to these people from the Department of State. I've asked several times for you to show me the certification of these people. I even foiled it and I got three measly letters and a couple of certificates that mean nothing. Uh, there are classes. I have given all this stuff to David Edwards. He's not here tonight because I believe of family problems. Um, I've given all this to him. I've given copies of everything I've received from the state. The only thing he doesn't have is a copy of this letter. I uh, made you a copy of the folder that the gentleman gave to us today. It's just kind of an informational folder. Uh, I've given David copies of what the county has mailed to me or faxed to me that the way the code enforcement people have to uh, handle their job. I do know that there is a, uh, there is a um, meeting scheduled tomorrow here, as I understand it, around 5 o'clock, I believe, with Dave Edwards, uh, Brace Talents, and Mr. Labarge. That was enacted through these people that were here today calling Brace Talents and him having to report to them in Albany. Now he's going to have to report back how that meeting came out. And uh, there are other routes we could go. We could take it to the review committee down there and then they would in turn come up here and, uh, and uh, straighten the situation out. Uh, I don't want to have to go that route if I don't have to. But I would like from you, as I have asked before, a letter just stating, are our people certified? And if they are, I want the proof with the letter. If they're not, I want you to say so, and that they are in the process of, of getting certification. That's the only thing I ask. I'm not writing a letter. Well, I, I, I have understand you all. So in turn, just so you know, I am going to write a letter to the Department of State telling him you refuse to write a letter to that effect. Because and let them I have not yet determined. Well, and let them handle their situation okay. with you, because I'm done with it. Don't, no. Who's that? Frank? Good evening. Hi. Got your snowshoes with you? Yeah. Frank Fox, Town of Granby. Um, I'm not here to talk about the, the codes. Uh, I guess part of my little speech here uh, got superseded uh, because I hadn't heard anything about the insurance, and I was concerned about uh, where, where the town was going with the insurance uh, policy that is already said on here. And, and, uh, uh, Mrs. Holmes touched on it a little bit. Oh, you're talking about the claim for yeah, the yeah. Uh, water thing? No, no, I mean the, the health insurance. Oh, health insurance. Contract okay. for the employees, okay. you mean? Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't begrudge anybody any coverage, okay? But I think that in today's climate of business, uh, the, you know, all the businesses and, and, and among many governments are, are making people pay more and more of the co-pays and, and uh, it's it's not the free ride that it used to be because it can't the town the businesses can't afford it, and um, it just seemed to me that uh, uh, initially when you had the proposed budget out there it was a little outrageous. But um, I, I think that um, and, and I don't know what it what it says, but you got to have um, uh, uh, fair deductibles and fair copays. And, and the schedule should be based, I don't know what it's based on, but it should be based on fair and reasonable, or fair and customary costs. And above fair and customary reasonable costs, the people should have to pay like anybody else pays their insurance. If I go and they say, my company says it's not customary and reasonable, and it's too much, and, and I get charged $50 for a doctor call, and they say it's $10 too high, I got to pay that $10, $10, besides my co-pays and whatever. So, uh, I, I just don't know where that goes, and I would hope that that um, uh, the print media you would uh, give the print media a copy of this, so that all the people of town in Granby would know uh, what you're giving these people. Um, last but not least, um, I would sort of hope because this insurance. Uh, package uh, that you passed, I guess, I, I would guess that 
you would have, have you would, and Mr. Edwards would have abstained from voting on this uh, because of possible conflict of interest. Because of your, you're getting a, a, a part of the insurance, and also that uh, it would affect your insurance when you retire, when and if you retire. And I and uh, Mr. Edwards is here to answer himself, so I would think that. Um, there are some questions that uh, uh, could be raised as far as uh, Mr. Edwards should disqualify himself from voting on the thing. Um, I won't necessarily go into that unless you want me to. But, uh, uh, maybe he, I need to clarify. Is well, Mr. Edwards sits on the thing and votes on the insurance. And um, part of the, uh, he's, a, he's a member of a, a number of organizations which there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's a number of organizations that town employees belong to and so does he. And some people might consider it improper. There could be an appearance of an impropriety there and you should err on the side of judgment. So I'm just saying that I don't feel that you should have voted on it and Mr. Edwards shouldn't have voted on it. Um, I'm glad to see uh, our two legislators here. Uh, I think that they're trying to do a good job. I think they are doing a good job, especially Mr. Basho and Mr. Uh, French. Mr. French. Right? <laughs> Jesus, my mind. I'm ancient. My mind's gone. Mr. French. Uh, but the only thing is that uh, sometimes they get uh, led down the garden path by certain individuals down there, and, and I think that. Uh, they should uh, uh, be wary of some of the things that they're told, that's all. But I think basically they're both doing a good job and they've got the interest of the county and, and the town of Granby at heart. I agree with you. And, and, I, and I think they're doing an excellent job. Um, I, I, I don't think I have anything else. The only thing that I would, would guess that I would say was that uh, it scares me to think that uh, the town could be sued over some of this, uh, these problems. And that uh, a FOIL is a government request. Uh, it's a federal regulation when you FOIL something. And if you fail to comply with the FOIL, um, you might be in trouble with the federal government. That's all I got to say. Okay. Okay. This will. Motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting and to accept them as written February 9th and February 23rd. I'll second it. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I have I didn't quite a. Words you just said up there. Dispense the, the, oh, sharing a microphone, I'm sorry. We're just, he read that we would dispense with the reading of the minutes of previous meetings. Two meetings. Would you like for me to speak if I sign that paper? Yeah, you can speak. I'm sorry. I I'm kind of, I had given you the opportunity and I thought you uh, had declined it, but because you're not. Can you turn the camera on? No. Oh, you can have camera. You put your name down here and go up to the podium. I know that you, I, I don't remember you coming before, so this is probably new, so we'll bend the rules for you. Okay. Five minutes. I want to know what made you guys go to this uh, tax assessment, because the town of Granby's taxed out. This is ridiculous, okay? Mm -hmm. He said 40% went down. Well, I'm one of the other 60% that is outrageous, okay? I had enough of this town, and I don't know why you guys did this, but... You got to think of the regular people. Okay. All right. um, David, did you want to make any further comments about? Uh, pro uh, okay. There's two reasons, um, and this started, gosh, a year and a half ago, two years ago. The whole process. Almost two years. Now. Almost two years. Our equalization rate is 82%. That means 
in practical terms, where Volney and Fulton are paying a school tax rate of around $24 and some cents, we are paying a school tax rate of $29 and some cents. Same school district. Same thing happens in, in Scruple and, and Hannibal. Um, this, the county tax rate, offhand, I don't remember the two rates, but our tax rate is much higher than people in the city of Fulton and the Grambys tax rate for county tax. This year it's twelve, thirteen dollars per thousand. Other people in the county are paying nine, ten dollars per thousand. Something I don't remember the exact figures. So it is not right, and this happens because of our equalization rate. The other reason that we knew we had to do it is because the town has not been reassessed in fifteen years. That means through that period of time, there have been developed a lot of inequities in someone new moves in and maybe their assessment has been looked at and, and is fairly high relative to someone who has been here and done nothing with their house. and Nobody has reassessed it in 15 years. And that could be your neighbor. So to get rid of those inequities is another reason that we felt it was important to, to do the revel. Okay. More importantly, you make up the difference in the inequity. If your neighbors assess too lowly, you're helping to, uh, excuse me, too low, you're helping to pay their portion of right. what they should be paying mm -hmm. on, as well as everyone else is assessed what they should be. So most people say, you know, as long as it's fair, and we're looking for fairness. And there is a process yeah. to go through if you don't, do not believe your particular assessment is correct. Don't come to us because we cannot get involved in particular assessments go through the process and uh, see what happens. You're not getting your fair share of the STAR program either. The right. And that, you can, you but can. It's not uh, going to make a difference when yours goes up so high, there's no way you can pay that. It's not going to make a difference, is it? I, a point I did. Okay. And then come into the county or to our board assessment review for variables. If you're off the line, you will leave you, it'll get changed. All right, let's not have any, uh, you know. I'm sorry. I, but we're trying to keep our order here. Did I explain it right? Absolutely. If there is one point of clarification. It okay. That forty percent went down, and the rest went up. No, it didn't. Forty percent went down. I was told it was sixteen, sixteen, and sixty-eight, or yeah, sixty-eight. It wasn't. Forty percent went down. How much went up? Sixteen, eighteen percent. Well, it, the varying degrees of up. They measure by plus or minus ten percent, greater than a certain percent. Yeah. So and there was a lot to stay flat to deal with. So I'm saying the same. Right. Unfortunately, it all go up. Sixty percent of the county go up, though, Chris. Uh, my assessment went up thirty-six thousand. My taxes went up seven hundred. Mine went up ninety. It, it's unbelievable. Well, I, right. it's I understand that. That's enough. Uh, the one point that I, I was wishing you, perhaps, had made, uh, David, is that you are. I'm sorry. You are assessing on full market value. Absolutely. And that has changed a lot in fifteen years, especially waterfront property. And those are the people who were hit the hardest. So, okay. Now let's move on. I had a couple of notices. Uh, there's a public hearing. Thank you. A public hearing that is not our public hearing, but I they sent me a notice of it. Is the county. County of Oswego Industrial Development Agency. And they're having a public hearing on uh, March 28th here in this room at 9 o'clock in the morning regarding financing for Roja Incorporated, which is uh, the corporation that is developing uh, the old man's place, which is on Rathburn Road. So if you're interested in that and have any comment about that, you may attend that hearing. It's not our public hearing. It's a hearing that's being held by the County of Oswego Industrial Development Agency, and they propose to assist in financing the project by providing a direct loan in principal amount sufficient to pay for part of the cost of construction. They're holding the meeting here, the public hearing? Yes, they ask if they could use our building because they need to hold a meeting in Granby. That's for a Grammy resident, right? 
I don't know I, I would if it's that. only Granby residents or maybe not, because this is a county money. Uh, well, I don't know if it's county money, but they they are. Uh, it's not just the county or a Granby issue. Yep. Okay. Lysander Town and Lysander's having a public hearing. Oh, I thought I had it written down here. Here it is. On March 10th, that's tomorrow night at 7.30 at their town building on Lock Street in Baldwinsville. And that's regarding an amendment of the, their zoning map change for 7.84 acres from ag residential to general commercial. The property is on Route 48. That is, again, a requirement that they notify adjacent communities. The other thing I wanted to tell you about, uh, recently when I talked to someone from the USDA, I was talking to him about water financing for a water project, but we talked about programs for home repairs. I said, you know, there's a lot of people in this town who need some help with fixing up their homes. There is a program that USDA has, and I have application packets. I'm sure that the, there's a lot of red tape to it, but it is, uh, can provide either loans or in some cases grants for people. People have to be very low income and uh, to get a grant you have to be at least 62 years old. But I just wanted to pass that on if you know somebody that needs, and this is, has to be something important like a, a roofer or insulation or something, not cosmetic repairs. I do have the application packets and I will try to help people to put them together if someone's interested. And there's a notice out on the board that gives the income levels. Okay, we had local law, a uh, public hearing on local law number one. And we need to pass that law so that we can send it to Albany. Would you like to do that one? No, I guess so. Start with whereas. Yeah. Whereas it has been proposed that the town of Granby adopt a local law establishing the date for the meetings of the Board of Assessment Review to, to hear complaints in relation to assessment. And whereas a public hearing was set on March 9th, 2005, 7 p.m. before the town board to obtain comment from the residents of the town regarding the proposal. And whereas the town board has determined that enacting a local law established a date for the meetings of the town board of assessment review to hear complaints in relation to assessments would be in the best interest of the town now it is hereby resolved that the town granby town board adopts local law number one of 2005 establish a date for the meeting of the board assessment review to hear complaints in relation to assessments and it is further resolved that local law number one 2005 shall take effect upon filing in this office of New York's Secretary of State and in the office of the State Board of Real Property Service. Thank you. Oh, Is there I'll a second? second? I'll second. Okay. Ruth, will you please call the roll? Council Greco. Yes. Council Yes. Council Haggerty. Yes. Council Rathers. Yes. Thank you. That takes care of that. Ruth will take care of the paperwork on that. So we can plan on grievance day. This year will be June 1st. Other years it will be that Wednesday following the usual week. All right. I have a resolution sent to me by the DEC regarding the uh, salt storage contract. Um, and they asked that I pass this resolution tonight. This is because they are giving us a grant of $50,000, and I thank you, Mr. French, for help with that. Um, the resolution, I'll read it if you want. Uh, we'll have to take turns on these. Resolution authorizing the signing of the state contract for an aid to localities project under appropriate laws in New York State. Whereas the town of Granby, herein called a municipality, 
After thorough consideration of the various aspects of the problem and study of available data, it is hereby determined that certain work, as described in the state contract, herein called a project, is desirable in the public interest and is required in order to study and or implement the local project or program. And whereas under Chapter 53, Section 1 of the Laws of 2002, relating to the local assistance budget, the legislature has authorized financial assistance to localities for services and expenses related to local projects, programs, and studies by means of a written agreement. And whereas the municip municipality has examined and duly considered Chapter 55, Section 1 of the Laws of 2002, relating to the local assistant budget and deems it to be in the public interest and benefit under this law to enter into a contract therewith. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board, the town of Granby, that the town supervisors directed and authorized this official representative to act in connection with any contracts between the municipality and the state and to provide such additional information as may be required that one certified copy of this resolution be prepared, sent to the New York State Department of en Environmental Conservation, Albany, together with the state contract, that this resolution take effect immediately. I'll make a motion on that. Thank you. Is Thank you for reading it. I'll second it. Okay. This simply says, yes, we'll work with you on the uh, uh, project. Uh, the DEC is the... Uh, I guess you'd call it they're administering the money, the grant money part of it. Um, but they are requiring that this resolution be made and that I sign a contract. And the contract simply says that if you don't spend the 50000 you give it back to them and you make proper paperwork, keep proper records, and so forth and so on. Um, Ruth, will you call the roll? Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hoffman? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I'll make a resolution on that one, huh? Okay. Yes. I need to just read what's yeah, down that's here. That's all right. Yeah. I'll make a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign the negotiated labor agreement between the town and Teamsters Local 317. Is there a second to that? Okay. All right. I've already explained what is in the contract. Uh, I think pretty thoroughly. Ruth, will you call the roll? Councilor Greco. Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne. Yes. Councilor Haggerty. Yes. Councilor Abbott. I have a little problem with the record. There isn't any. I know it. The help. That. The payment. The retroactive payment. Excuse me, I can't really hear you back here. Uh, speak up. What we discussed at our last meeting. Carol, oh, speak up, would you, so we can hear you back here? I said, I, I don't know what you have a problem with. I have a problem with a retroactive pay, but not retroactive insurance oh. payment. What happened? That's why I'm voting no. Okay. What happened was... Retroactive. They know I have a problem with it. We had a yeah. meeting with it. Okay. All right, that... Resolution is passed. Uh, the other thing I, I didn't think to mention, uh, we agreed to set it up so that these contributions that our employees make are made on a pre-tax basis. And uh, uh, when we looked into it and finally found someone who could set that up, they said we could not take that back to the first of the year. We have to start, we'll start in March. So, that, that, so that's the part you were complaining about. I think right, that's Carol? that's what she's referring yeah. to. Oh, okay. But there's nothing we can do about that. These pre-tax plans are the all the requirements are set up by the federal IRS. It is doesn't cost us anything other than the cost of setting it up and maintaining it. But the town does save some money actually because. Um, the contribution amount is not subject to Social Security and Medicare tax, even the employer's share. So, okay, that part. Now we also have to have a separate resolution on the health insurance uh, regarding the health insurance. 
Resolution, I'll make the resolution authorizing SUPI to sign the agreement with the Teamsters Health and Hospital Fund <coughs> to be a health insurance carrier for the union highway employees and the full-time non-union employees. You second to that? No, second. Okay. Okay, this names, we've already done an interim agreement. This names the uh, Teamsters Council Health and Hospital Fund as our, our provider of the insurance. Uh, it's all this does is a contract with them. We have found in the past that this is cheaper insurance, better insurance at less cost. And, and we saved about $50,000 in the last three years because we did go with this insurance. Part of the contract, it's just another, don't worry, I have to worry about it for another three years. Bruce, you called the roll. Elsa Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Elsa Haggerty? Yes. Elsa Rabbit? I have to vote yes on this because as long as it's gone through, it is a deal. Mm -hmm. As far as the insurance goes. All right. I'll make this other resolution, keep things moving here. Resolution authorizing the super, supervisor to sign an agreement with EBS Benefit Solution Incorporated for, an, for annual plan of compliance services related to the pre-tax as required by the IRS. And okay. You can explain what We uh, already contracted to with EBS to do set up this pre-tax plan. They also, the board, when we talked about it, had some questions about the uh, maintenance of it because the pre-tax, setting up the plan costs $350. There's a $250 maintenance. 350 to set it up and it's going to be $250 per year. Per for, year. For the IRS and they wanted plan. me to find out some more information, which I did. <clears throat> the information I found out was that we can't wait until the end of the year to uh, to find somebody to do this maintenance part of it. Uh, the IRS requires it. Uh, if you don't do it, there's hefty fines and uh, I was going to say something else and I lost and I lost a piece of paper that I had. Yeah, okay. Uh, but in uh, it's more than just filling out a form at the end of the year or after the end of the year. That's part of it. There is a, a form that has to be filled out, but there's some work that they have to do through the year. So that's, that's I think that answers all the questions. I, the other question was whether we can get out of that contract, and, and they said yes, with written notice, so. Right. Okay, we have that resolution. Do we have a second on that one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, call the roll, please. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yep. Okay. Now, I'm trying to ask this stuff. I have so much the, stuff. I want to keep it straight. No, I don't. I want to ask you if you will take care of, take yeah. care of uh, getting some quotes for yeah. oh, all right. the lawn care. I don't remember getting in touch with anybody. No, we haven't yet. <laughs> At least we're really jumping but, the gun. Um, okay. If you would do that for yep. us, and then uh, we don't put it out to bid, but we do get quotes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That one's done. Oh, there's my polling place thing. The polling places. Each year we have to designate what our polling places are going to be for the town of Granby and notify the Board of Elections accordingly. Um, I'll make that resolution designating the polling places for the town of Granby in 2005 for District 2, 5, and 6. It would be Granby Center Fire Hall. Districts 3 and 4 would be the Granby Community Center, which is the building next door. And District 1 and 7 would be Cody Fire Hall, Wilcox Road. I'll okay. second. Okay. Don't fight. Okay. Please call the roll on that one, Ruth. Councilor Greco? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Respect. Respect. 
All right. So I know we're everybody would like to get going, but I there's one other item I'd like to bring up. We talked about chairs here for this platform. These chairs have been here for 30, 35 years probably. Yeah. Um, they're too low. They don't, you know, they're not very satisfactory. And we were all ready to buy this chair back here, the you know, the black new ones like that, but they don't fit. They, no, it's too we wide. We measured they're too wide to fit seven chairs. And when we have planning board here, we have to have seven chairs. So fortunately we measured, Vince helped me measure one day, and we divided it and realized there would only be an inch in between. So then we started looking for chairs that have at least maybe three inches that would allow about three inches in between, which would mean a 20 foot, 24 inch wide chair. And they're hard to find. You've called. I went to Staples, I went to Office Max. Right. Everything's 25. And we wanted to keep it down to 24, so that would allow three inches. So I talked to Fulton Typewriter. They've come out here and measured, and, and, and they talked to their supplier. They have a supplier who will cut down the chair, make it a couple inches smaller in the seat. And so basically we're getting a custom chair. Uh, we also can get it at state bid. But it, it is going to cost more than if you just went up and, and bought a hundred dollars, you know. It will be, uh, well, we have a choice, and I'll give you the choice. One of them is $224 each, and the other one's 248 However, the one that's 248 does have two inches bigger seat. So that's the one I would recommend. Still going to fit, though? Yes, because... The, this one has a smaller seat, but it has flared arms, so it oh, takes out more, takes out which more one space. Are we getting? I would recommend this one. Oh, with the small arms? Well, actually, you can put loop arms, which are better. Okay. Like loop arms or something like that, I think. Yeah, more like that. Okay. So and it's I, state bid, right? And it's state bid price. It means it's the lowest price that you can find for that. Well, on a custom chair, it's a good yeah. deal. But this one, right? uh, with loop arms, I'm this not going to be into a chair at all. I want to get it for But take two months. So yeah. be I think for the extra few dollars, I would go with the other. Well, you're going to be here for a while. Right here. Okay. So I'd like you to uh, authorize me. I, I would recommend this one, mm -hmm. the Zircon. I'll make a motion on it. Okay. Yeah, I do need a motion because under our rules of procedure. Right, right. I make a motion. I need a motion. <coughs> a second? Okay. All in, uh, Ruth called it a roll. Okay. Yes. We're voting on the $248 one, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hoffman? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Okay. I'll get them ordered. It will probably take a while because they are being custom. Are you black by any chance? The leather? I, I don't know what color. Will you leave that up to me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, you can come in and look at the colors, but I think some color would be nice. Oh, I don't care. Make them too tall. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, let's move on. Count, county legislators. We have two here tonight. <laughs> Well, we got some good news. I brought with us the financial report for 2004, and uh, <laughs> and the county's done real well. It's done a complete turnaround in the last year, just over a year. We went from an unappropriated fund balance of just over a million to now we have sixteen million eight hundred thousand dollars, which is amazing. I am very confident that you will have property tax decrease this year. I'm going to be pushing hard for that. Uh, but this didn't come easy. There was a lot of work. It was the minority and majority working together. They worked very hard. All the committees, they worked with the administrator, the treasurer, the attorney. Uh, it's a combined effort to make this happen. It wasn't, uh, it, we, department heads did a great job too. They kept everything at a uh, bare minimum. Uh, tomorrow's our meeting. There's a couple of Controversial issues. I just was asked again tonight about one of them. We're looking at uh, 
extending the lease program from five to 20 years to, to possibility of letting long-term leases. One of them is for our uh, cellular towers. A vendor coming on wants to know that they can stay there a certain amount of time, that they're not going to be forced to leave before they put the money up to do it. Uh, our racetrack, uh, there's a misconception that we're trying to do it for something to do with the landfill. This has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the landfill issue. This, we're not looking at privatizing the landfill. It's a complete fa falsehood. But, and there's another thing I'd like to tell you that uh, we're putting together a rabies clinic for Granby. It's going to take care of the west side. I Are talked, you, you yes. think that's going to work? I mean, yes, we're going to definitely do, do it? it. Yes, we, I, it, Good. Uh, the, it hinged on making sure that we could get the mm -hmm. access to the mm -hmm. town barn to use it. And I didn't ask Lynn. Is that okay, Lynn, if we <laughs> use that for the rabies clinic? Town barn. Oh, we've done, like we've done in the past? Yes. Yeah. Sure. There's yeah. nothing set up for the west side, so we, some of us, Phil, uh, Jack Beckwith, uh, Hofer, take care of this area. We, we're going to push to get a rabies clinic, and we'll definitely get it when we have it in Granby. Yeah, yeah. We always have a big turnout here in the past. Yes, so yes, so it should work out real well. Okay. Um, like I said, tomorrow's a meeting. Tomorrow's a 7 o'clock meeting. It's a public hearing. 7 o'clock, and then our meeting's directly okay. afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I urge you all to attend, and maybe Phil might want to say something, too. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to add to what Mike said. The, the reasons for the uh, increase in the unappropriate fund balance, there was two things. We had an unexpected surge in sales tax. Mm -hmm. That might be due to the cost of gas, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, going up you know? more. <laughs> yeah, and then we had uh, retro payments from uh, DSS. DSS, about $4 million for the two prior years. So that was $8 million approximately that that we didn't anticipate that we were going to, that we had. Mm -hmm. But we aggressively went after yeah. I mean, it was out right. the DSS was So as Mike said, you know, we're going to really work hard to try to lower the tax levy. We're not done. We're just starting now. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see what's at the end of this year, what it's right. like, right. how much of the unappropriated fund balance is then. And I'd really like to reiterate what Mike said about the uh, – there's never been any mention of privatizing the landfill. <coughs> there might have been some of a public-private partnership, maybe, but never. We would never privatize the landfill. Swigel County is always going to be in control of the landfill. All we want to do is maximize the system. We want to get the most out of the system that we possibly can do. And we're looking into many different ways to try to do this. So all the rhetoric that you read, it's just rhetoric. And, and I, I give you my word on it. There's no, never, we'll never privatize that landfill. Uh, and, and, you know, all, all the scare tactics people are using. Uh, the DEC, you think they're going to let us make a travesty of that landfill? Of course not. Uh, and one other thing I'd like to mention, and I'll be brief. Uh, in May, we're going to have a, a cleanup for municipalities. We're going to reduce the, the tipping fees in half at the landfills. Oh, okay. So... And that'll help everybody. Yeah, that's for um, appliances and such? Uh, I don't, is it, Mike? No, it's uh, it, pesticides, it's, poisonous. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, I read about that Yeah, one. but oh. we're going to have the month long. Oh, this, the, the month yeah, long. It's not going to be any paints or anything like that. Right. No, that's. Just tipping fees at the, at the landfills are going to be reduced in That's the kind of thing. If half. we wanted to do a uh, community cleanup yes. day and yes, that, collect, that's, uh, you know, Washington and if you have a special thing, you know, you call Mark Fletcher's time exactly a week before. Half price. Yeah. Right, half it's price. Still, right. still better than It's hard. That's a big problem with yeah. people who would like to keep their properties nice, but you get something like a right. worn-out washing machine, what do you do with it? Right. You know. Well, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I believe there is... Huh? I believe there was a uh, clean... I read in the paper about a clean-up of... Agricultural chemicals? That's good. That's a, that's a DEC is doing that. Is that paint and stuff like that too? No. Just, well, municipalities, if, you know, if we had some barrels of yes. something, <laughs> uh, pesticides or whatever, but there was one, I read in the paper about one town that had some stuff. Yeah. They didn't even know what it was. So. There was <laughs> Okay, we'll move on. Yes, we can here. We have a report from the dog control officer. 
39 complaints, 4 dogs picked up, 1 dog died or destroyed, 4 released, uh, food was donated, vet cost was $388, uh, monthly mileage 432, impoundment fees 30, adoption fees 5. Well, one died, it said destroyed or died, so there was one that was hit by a car I heard about, and I think that's probably the one that they had to put down. Oh, okay. uh, she doesn't. If she has a dog that's healthy, she finds a home for it. Yeah. So, Cesar, I think we've, that's all sorry. you know, we know where we're at there. Um, Planning board, I don't think I have anything tonight. ZBA, anything? No okay. activity. Not late, thank you. Uh, youth, have you heard anything? No. From I've called her a couple of times yeah. and not got an answer. I think she had something a week or so. Bowling. Bowling, was it? I mm -hmm. It's out in the paper. Highway superintendent. Well, first off, I wonder if we should put the county legislators on Alaska. It seemed like everybody got up and left just before they were supposed to get up to speak. So. Well, you know, maybe they'd like to come on first, and then they could leave. <laughs> well, that could be, too. <laughs> I thought about that. I really did, because you do have to sit through a lot of our, like tonight, we had a lot of business to take care of, and we could move that them up to an earlier part of the meeting. That's why we have other meetings that we put off. Because I know. I mean, summer. you go to enough meetings. Okay, well, last month I wasn't here because we were busy at work, and they're still out there tonight working, but uh, pretty much tell what we've been doing because of the weather. Everybody's been affected by it. Uh, in January, we ordered a couple, 200 extra ton of salt, or 200 more ton, and another 358 ton in February, and uh, try and keep us going. Last winter, there was a big shortage because of the storms up the East Coast, but this year, doesn't seem to be a shortage at all. It only takes a couple days to get our orders in now, which has been nice. Um, a lot of repair work. I'll just go down a list of some of the stuff we've done to the different vehicles, give you an idea of the kind of things the guys are working on when they're not plowing. On the 1992 truck, they replaced the ignition switch and wiring, front hub, drum brakes, rim, and the tire. 97 truck, they replaced the starter, wheel hub, repaired the radiator shroud. 89 truck to replace the wheel hub and a blower motor. 99 pickup, we had to replace an alternator. 97 pickup, replaced the plugs and wires. The 2001 truck, replaced rear brakes, the engine belts, and repaired the conveyor chain that broke. The 1982 truck, they installed an engine heater, repaired the heater motor, replaced tie rod ends and a drag link. And the uh, 74, 1974 loader, they replaced the front brake pads, the pistons, and the pins. Wow. Posted the OSHA injury log for the month of February, which is required. Um, I, you probably mentioned the salt building before I got here, maybe. I didn't about really talk about it anything. other than we had that resolution to uh, accept the, the okay. grant money. Well, J Priori Construction from Utica, um, it's a recommendation of the engineer was the accepted low bidder for 141326 and uh, the contracts will be signed, I guess, when all the bonds, insurances, and all that stuff is in place. Ordered salt for next winter off the state bid contract. For some reason now, they wanted us to order for next winter by this March 17th, which has been a change, but maybe they have to plan long range. I'm not sure why, but got that order in. Uh, on that order, we required to purchase 70% of our order, and then we can go over by 120%, and if we use any more than that, then the cost doubles. So try, we try and be really careful on what we put in for an order. Referring to salt? For the salt, yes. On March 23rd, the town highway superintendents from Oswego, Cayuga, and Onondaga County were charting a bus. Um, going down to Albany to meet with representatives, trying to get an increase in our CHIPS funding. I think it's been pretty much the same for the last 12 years. And with the rising costs and the uh, infrastructure problems we have in the state, we're going to push hard to try and get some more money. Um, 
and that won't be any cost to the towns. Our separate organizations are going to pay for any of the costs involved in going down and doing that. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. I got a question, Lynn, why you're still there. It's not a sure. question. And everybody's left now, unfortunately. And I know the people on the board know this. And they always want to knock the highway department about their wages and insurance. Our highway department probably does 80% of the repairs. There's highway apartments in these towns. If you go to these different garages and you'll see these trucks, they're paying a lot of money. They just, honestly, they just don't appreciate how able we got an able body crew that can actually fix the, fix the trucks. A lot of towns don't have that. You know that as being highway superintendent. You know, they, they work awful hard over there to try and keep things running because yeah. they know when we get a vehicle, it lasts for, we're looking at <laughs> minimum of 18 to 20 years. I know. So, you need to take care of it. But a lot of them, I see them in garages when I drive around. It'll say the town is so-and-so, and it's in some garage. So you know that town's paying a lot of money per hour to get that truck fixed. Yeah, yeah. That's Repair all right. costs are high. Everybody left, unfortunately. <laughs> Good point. Uh, code enforcement, I have a report for the month of February. There were five building permits issued. This is our quiet time. Uh, Fees collected at 508, construction value of $148,500, 27 inspections, three court cases, and two court cases closed. Ruth, anything? Yeah, we've, had a, we've had a fairly busy month in the town clerk's office. Uh, just thought I'd go through a few of the things we've been doing. Uh, we processed about 650 taxes this month, this, in the month of February. 95 dog licenses. I issued copies of one birth, death, and marriage certificate. Did four genealogy documents. Two fishing licenses, nine handicapped parking, and I notarized 14 documents. And that's just some of the things that we've done in there. Uh, right now, we're, we're working on preparing about 700 uh, second notices that will be going out tomorrow and Friday for uh, unpaid taxes. And uh, so people, after the 15th of the month, there's an additional dollar added on to the taxes. So uh, we've been working on that this week. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I was working on this month is the annual report. This is it. It was 64 pages, uh, very detailed. This is a financial report for the entire year 2004. Um, it was completed. I had it filed. I filed it electronically uh, in the middle of the month. It was due the end of February. So that's a very time-consuming job, but. Uh, in terms of the results, uh, I would say that we are, we finished the year in very good shape, very good fiscal health. Um, there were, of course, obviously there were no accounts overdrawn. We knew that because I balance each account or each, I close each fund every single month. So by the end of the year, we know that we're okay. Uh, I'm amazed sometimes when I read about towns that yeah. get to the end of the year and have no idea whether they've got any cool. money left or what. <laughs> well, I don't want to mention any yeah. names, yeah. but um, there's yeah. another annual report that I have to do for USDA. I talk, mentioned earlier about the paperwork when you get into a government program like that, but because we have a a loan with them for the sewer line up north, we have to do an annual report that's quite extensive, and I filed that also. Um, when I was talking to people from USDA, they are always coming out with new requirements and now they want us to put a uh, statement regarding equal opportunity on our letterhead. And we were almost out of letterhead anyway, so I put that statement on the letterhead. Also they have a uh, phone number here for hearing impaired. Oh, so. So, and I kind of re redesigned it a little bit, so. Okay. Thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. So, let's pay the bills. Okay. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion we pay the town bills audited for abstract 151 in the amount of $39,358.06 from the general fund 
$19,461.71 from the highway fund, $81 from the Willowbrook Lighting District. Okay, second to that. I'll second it. The reason the numbers are high is with the general fund is uh, we have an annual insurance bill, which of course is substantial. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next meeting will be two weeks from tonight, and our next regular monthly meeting is April 13th at 7 o'clock. Motion to adjourn. I'll make it. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.